Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, if I uh, push now to gallery view, I see a lot of uh, familiar names and would be really nice if I can see your faces. And it's also same way pleasant to see unfamiliar names and unfamiliar faces. Uh, I uh, am Ekuna. Well, I got that name, my full name. And uh, I've been working uh, with um, uh, Natalie in the Buddhist Civic Education Forum in the past, but right now I am um, a second year student of International and Comparative Education Program uh, at Stockholm University. And before I studied education, uh, before that, I studied education administration and was engaged in designing and leading the capacity building projects for schools and youth organizations mostly. They have done action research on curriculum development through cooperation between the teachers based on the framework on democratic cultural competencies. And in general, my great interest is related to the citizenship and civic education. Uh, and last year and a half, mostly, I've been uh, doing these small research papers and exploring the Georgian citizenship education curriculum from comparative and international perspective, like including the intersection between the global and the local discourses of citizenship education. And today, as I am now presented in front of so many citizenship education teachers, I feel um, I feel a little um, anxious about what I'm going to present soon, uh, because my perspective is rather theoretical and uh, is a research, but I and limited with researching uh, documents uh, and um, what is at the side of the screen uh, is the practice and the different perspective you might have uh, those who are teaching the citizenship education and those who have especially for those who have done the program that I've, I've researched uh, which is a 60 credits module program for teachers preparation in Georgia so I know that we have here different countries than Georgia, but uh, unfortunately, my research doesn't cover as so much um, other countries than uh, Georgia. But I think it's, I mean, perspective or theories could be relevant for uh, other countries, as I am talk, going to talk about a non-Western context and citizenship um, and human rights education uh, within the citizenship uh, education curriculum. Uh, before I start um, presenting my research, I would like to ask you um, if you have done um, the 16 credits, academic credit models for teachers training. Um, and if there is a similar program in uh, Armenia, so I see like Armenian representatives here. Uh, yes, Natalie has done it. You can also speak up and say words if you like i did it last year uh, and it was a bit um, strange because all my course was held online so i can't really say uh, much about it but i i think a lot of other teachers have different um, experience of teaching um, how to become citizenship education teachers Mm -hmm. And is there, uh, is there is a program like this for preparing civic education teachers in Armenia? Thank you, Eguna, for the question. Actually, I'm coming from non-formal education sector system. I'm not too much familiar with the curriculum and the design of the curriculum, uh, which is going in uh, the Ministry of Education. But since our NGO, Youth is Power NGO, is working with young people, with students particularly, I'm a bit familiar what, uh, what's ongoing process is there. And uh, yes, in Armenia, the Ministry of Education and Science, they are having some specific courses for the teachers to prepare them and to include uh, uh, citizenship education or civic education competencies in the specific uh, uh, course, yeah, lesson, which was social science, something like this. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, so I think we can start sharing uh, the um, 
the screen now. I think Natalie will help me share the screen so I can see my notes. Um, so what does citizenship education teachers teach to learn? I've, uh, I've started uh, researching this topic um, uh, after I've researched what are the topics of citizenship education curriculum for secondary school in Georgia um, uh, teach. So I've first researched uh, in my previous um, papers uh, the curriculum uh, itself and then I was um, for secondary school and then I was interesting to look at the models which are uh, provided in higher education. Uh, I've analyzed uh, two different models. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, say uh, from uh, name of the university, but I'm gonna say later uh, what are the names of the models later in my presentation. Uh, and before starting my presentation, I would like to uh, first say my personal interest because now I'm um, doing my master's in education, but I've also been a student of a secondary school before. And when I was a student of the secondary school, there was different uh, reforms and a lot of reforms to say has uh, been implemented. And I've experienced the changes as, I, as it was happening from the student perspective. And the tension and the fear of change were like prominent in the classroom. But the idea of hope for a better future were also prevalent. So I could see the confusion of teachers when we, they had to teach new textbooks when I was in high school, which was now um, uh, 15 years ago, or maybe less, 12 years ago. And even the frustration when the pedagogical approaches suddenly changed from teacher-centered to student-centered approach. So I could hear the distress and the teachers when um, they were told to give the rights to the children, to demand their rights. Um, I think we can go to the second slide, Natalie, sorry. Uh, so I could see this uh, tension from a high school uh, student perspective and the teacher's willingness to keep the authority in the classroom was uh, likely intensified in the process of transforming the education as their decades long teaching practices was omitted by the government organizations and lack of competencies of teachers were continued to be like pointed out in local media. A few years later, uh, and few reforms later to say, after I finished the high school, I got involved in action research where I was working with teachers in the process of building a curriculum for a Georgian primary school based on the democratic cultural competencies. And democratic cultural competencies is a framework which is um, which is issued by the incorporation between uh, European Union and Council of Europe, uh, and it uh, promotes democ democratic learning uh, and the competencies uh, which um, democratic competencies. Uh, and while working uh, in this action research, I worked with the teachers together. And during the discussions of the content of uh, CDC framework, I could still see the unfamiliarity and inadequacy of the concepts of tolerance towards diversity, plurality, and human rights. By then, I was already trained and had internalized this global concept of human rights education. However, I also felt constrained to meaningfully participate in building the curriculum based, uh, curriculum based on the CDC framework in Georgia. This experience has intensified my empathy towards the teachers' obligations of teaching Western concepts placed in non-Western context with no regards to local context or individual interpretation. By then, I understood that the teachers were not the problem, as it was often articulated by the governments or non-governmental education elites. So getting involved in the research about the citizenship education um, last one year and a half, I started to research and rationalize the struggle of the Georgian teachers by understanding the theoretical approaches of the tensions between global and the local discourses of human rights education. And that's motivated me to uh, go and uh, investigate what our teachers uh, are teaching, uh, what the teachers are learning in order to teach human rights education um, in the classroom. And here I have another question to the teachers. Uh, the first question is, uh, where in the curriculum um, do you teach human rights 
is it uh, in the curriculum or national curriculum as a um, overall aim of the curriculum or is allocated in one subject area? And we might hear different perspectives from different countries. Mostly we have Jordan teachers, but we also have Armenian perspective, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You have, <laughs> uh, as I have mentioned previously, Eguna, uh, we don't have certain subject for this, but this is somehow integrated to other subjects that we have in the Republic of Armenia, specifically the social science that we have uh, and the teachers, um, as far as I'm inform informed, yeah, I'm not from formal academic sector, but as far as I know, they are having uh, permanently some alternative uh, additional courses with the Ministry of Education and Science to increase uh, their potential and transfer this information to the pupils. Mm -hmm. And then Georgian curriculum, we have in the aims, um, but we also have it, I think, in the in the citizenship education. So human rights education is one of the aim of the education objectives, but it's allocated in uh, the subject of citizenship education. Before it was called civic education. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm mistaken, please correct me. It's called citizenship education, right? Yeah, it has changed. Um, all right. Uh, another question that I have before I continue my presentation is that uh, when you teach the human rights um, in the classroom, if you uh, if you encounter controversies in teaching human rights education, if for example uh, kids or students not kids sorry, uh, students have different perspective, and how do you deal with the controversies, which is maybe informed from the cultural perspectives. If you could share your reflection, it would be really nice. It would give great base for my presentation. Can I start? Of course, good to see you. First now. of all, I want to greet you. It's a great pleasure to see you here, Ekuna. I'm really pleased to attend your lecture. Well, uh, I want to greet everyone here. And uh, well, of course, when you teach uh, human rights, there are controversies, especially uh, I'm facing problems when I uh, well, when I uh, tackle gender equality because you know there are different perspectives of gender equality. So women are more eager to you know to talk about gender equality, you know equality as such, and men they are saying you know what it's not like guys. I mean like little boys. So they are saying okay equality is good, but you know I don't believe in gender equality. So. Uh, I'm trying just to calm down the kids, give my personal examples. Um, well, I'm trying just to be, just to let them talk. And uh, instead of seeing differences, just to um, see also similarities that maybe their views are not so different and there are some, you know, some common grounds. Uh, so that's my, I'm just trying to be nice to be, you know, just, I'm letting them to talk. And when they talk uh, and then they discuss, I think in the end, they agree that after all, uh, you know, it's not a big issue, just that they uh, say from, or they look at the issue from different perspectives. So I'm just, you know, letting them talk. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the, your input. Um, any reflections on this question about the controversies about human rights education? Marianne, I think, see what I mean? uh, Narine, sorry. Yeah, uh, since I'm the only one who is not from Georgia, but also I'm not a teacher, but uh, I want to reflect the Armenian case as well based on my own experience about the human rights education and human rights sector and what we have in schools. So the main disadvantage that I have faced as a pupil, later on as a student as well, that the critical thinking uh, inside this subject was missing really. 
this. So the teachers or uh, the lecturers later on, they, they are giving this material as an absolute truth without giving us the space and time to reflect, to think the ability of thinking in this case is very, very um, valuable because when we think, when we see the same thing from different perspectives, even the stuff that is connected with the women rights and gender equality, uh, we come to a true, uh, to a through the critical thinking that we have. And the situation is more severe in the regions, in the remote areas of Armenia. Uh, I'm from Yerevan, the capital city, but still the problem exists and the remote areas are facing this uh, situation in a severe way. Thank you. Yeah, thank you both. Um, it's good to have like this practical um, practical inputs uh, when we because now uh, for the uh, second slide, I'm gonna talk about the theoretical approaches and uh, what caused um, this. Um, how to say um, conceptualization in different ways, as you've talked about, Narine now that the critical thinking is often missing in the space for interpretation of the values that we talk about so i'm coming i'm gonna going to a little backwards uh, here before so i'm gonna uh, talk a little bit about uh, the education transformation in georgia and the uh, in relation to the uh, human rights and when human rights became a part of the national curriculum and how that affected the teaching itself the transformation of Georgian society to a democratic society through education has been this main goal, um, institutional goal, since the collapse of the Soviet Union. And I think that's not every post-Soviet countries, but a lot of uh, neighboring countries are can also relate uh, to this development. Uh, past reforms has also included the emphasis on human rights and human rights education. And consequently, learning about the human rights and the ability of students to apply their knowledge about the human rights is one of the national education objectives in Georgia. It specifically says learning about the human rights and be able to apply in practice. It's, uh, I'm just quoting from um, a national objective of education uh, of Georgia. And then uh, this aim is operationalized in citizenship education curriculum for secondary school. So it's, not, um, it's, it's not in all the subjects. Uh, as far as I know, uh, but it uh, specifically says that in the subject of citizen, citizenship education, uh, human rights uh, topics are uh, covered or should be covered. According to these education researchers focusing on post-Soviet context, um, articulate that there is a tension between two goals of education and the resistance to change, which has been noticeable in education transformation in Georgia. Uh, but in 2010, um, the researcher explains this tension by stating that the governments in post-socialist uh, countries promotes a liberal democracy and pluralistic views through critical thinking. However, at the same time, they encourage the nationalistic or monolistic ideas for social cohesion. So we see this like this tension between uh, wanting for this democracy um, and human rights, critical thinking is, is often promoted. And on the other side, we have this nationalistic or monolistic idea for social cohesion. So I repeat myself. Um, also, um, Kit 2012 also points out that the constraints of the social transformation through human rights education promote the promoted and the controlled by the intergovernmental organizations. I think we in our practice, we see a lot of uh, involvement of intergovernmental or international organizations in the practice of leading, financing, this is education. Um, and then sometimes it's left out without any conceptualization of these global discourses. The Georgian government, among oh, the other governments uh, across the globe, are committed to human rights and human rights education. This commitment is legally supportive in many countries and is prominent in education policies. Um, However, it lacks the teacher's professional education in teaching human rights to better understand the commitment of the governments and its relevance to their daily lives. Like we have European Convention of Human Rights, um, which is guaranteeing the protection of the rights to the members of the Council of Europe. And Georgia, Armenia is a member of the Council of Europe. 
um, and, and uh, as a member, they have this uh, not an obligation, but the recommendation to implement uh, implement uh, the human rights education in their in their education uh, curriculum, national education curriculum. Um, according to, the, to uh, one of the researcher kids, it was 20, uh, 2020, uh, 2012, argues that human rights education has a transformative potential and it promotes human rights education and being unaware about this transformative nature of human rights education, it will unavoidably be implemented in a way that simply repeats the list of rights, um, including like not including um, a meaningful uh, conceptualization uh, of, of these rights. Therefore, the critical and contextual understanding is uh, crucial to meaningfully uh, contextualize the human rights education and make it relevant for people who are learning it for the learners and for the teachers as well. And in this presentation, so I present this comparative analysis of human rights education discourse in Council of Europe Charter of Education for Democratic Citizenship and Human Rights Education. It's often uh, called, uh, it's not often, but like it's called um, as the abbreviation EDCHRE. Um, and uh, as I looked at a prospective Georgian citizenship education teachers training models from one of the universities in Georgia. And furthermore, I analyzed the results from the critical hermeneutical perspective approach uh, to better conceptualize the human rights education. Um, and here I continue to uh, talk about the aims of my small scale research. Uh, next slide. Mm -hmm. So I aimed to construct the understanding of how prospective citizenship education teachers for secondary school are prepared to teach human rights education and democratic citizenship in Georgia. So I do this because uh, human rights education is part of the citizenship education and I was curious to understand how the teachers who are obligated by the a cur a national curriculum to teach human rights education how they are supported in their training, which is provided by the universities. And it's a state program. And I also aim to shed the light of the potentiality of using critical perspectives in teachers' education for better conceptualization and contextualization of human rights. And EDC is Education for Democratic Citizenship in teachers' education. So my focus is on the teachers' training. And to, uh, do, uh, to, to achieve the same, um, I've set the research questions, so I ask, um, I ask research questions, if you could go to the second slide. Mm. Um, how similar or different are the international discourses of human rights within the European EDCHR Charter and Georgian prospective citizenship education teachers at models? And how can critical hermeneutical approach towards human rights education potentially inform a better conceptualization of human rights education within these models of the teachers training in Georgia? And what are the implications of education for democratic citizenship on human rights? So I, according to the three questions, I um, uh, looked to the model, text of the models and of course, like me looking at the text of the models might be very different. My analysis of results might differ from your experiences, those who uh, was part of this program and was taught through these models. But we will see that and we will open the discussion after I present my results. And it's really interesting um, in a way. Uh, okay. Uh, and um, before I present the, so I was informed by the theoretical framework, uh, which or which I'm going to present in a, in a bit. So human rights and human rights education, uh, and what are the different discourses or schools of human rights education, human rights education discourse, and how these different schools of thoughts uh, differ from each other. And the third conceptualization of human rights education is critical perspective, and this is, I'm going to present it uh, now. So before um, the human rights is defined as education to develop universal human rights culture and individuals to require, I quote, 
knowledge and skills, values, attitudes, and behaviors, and action. And UDCHR uh, itself is seen as a curriculum content containing uh, 30 human rights articles or blueprints for human rights education, with, which contains universal rights, freedoms, and moral values to be taught around the world. Um, Ahmed 2012 notes that the, while accepting the universal nature of human rights, it's crucial to explore how value-led discourses of human rights appears at the local level. This is something what uh, Nina talked about. No, the gender equality is one of the human rights, but how it appears in the classroom, it might differ uh, from the nature of the universality, how it's promoted on the global discourses of human rights education. And this concern indicates two schools of human rights thinkers, one who advocate the universality of human rights education and the others who advocate cultural relativism. Uh, the universality of human rights education is motivated by the argument that is coming from the West. And it is relevant to all cultural contexts and mostly promoted by the international and intergovernmental organizations as, as its like ultimate truth. And human rights education understanding from a cultural relativist perspective denies this universality of human rights and advocates rights, which comes from the cultural discourses. Uh, can, we, can we think about this example here of this? of different discourses, one which advocates the human rights, um, universality, and other who advocates cultural relativism. Uh, did we hear something in the recent, uh, recent events that has been happening in Georgia? Can you recall some of the examples of the recent happenings? Was it in summer? Anyone? No reaction to that? Uh, Aikuna, could you please repeat uh, the question? It is related how we understand and what practices we had uh, according to the third point, cultural relativism, right? Yeah, I can formulate my question uh, better. Uh, I wanted to uh, recall the events uh, of the discourses this, uh, which uh, took place uh, in New York and in Georgia. Um, recently, uh, the discourse of human rights, which was motivated from the cultural perspective, and the other discourses of human rights, which was motivated uh, and adv advocating by its universality. Uh, I was asking if you can recall some of the events um, that has happened uh, in um, in recent um, past. And we had this... Uh, Georgian teachers are so quiet on this topic. Well, because it's Maybe a, it's, like, give us some hints. Well, it's a political topic, but we had... Um, uh, we had this violent uh, activist in, in the streets a few uh, months ago and there on my Facebook feed I could see a lot of um, citizens of education teachers has been active and discussing about it and pointing out this issue that felt um, really promising. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, well, if I'm not mistaken, you were talking about uh, like when the journalists were attacked, maybe. Uh, on the streets when they were trying to uh, film and just to show people about the, you know, like parade. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that was the event, yes. How... And, and this yeah. event that you were talking about, Nino, uh, it's exactly what, uh, because one side, we talked about freedom of expression of the yeah. journal, which is a universal human right. And the other, on the other hand, the motivation of those groups who were violently attacking the journalist, uh, their motivation was like, uh, we Georgians, we, we don't like what you're saying as a journalist. So you should say, well, we are pleased yeah. by it. Yes, well, what I hated about it, sorry for interrupting, was that the majority of uh, our population, you know, is against of 
or you know this what against of this parade or something as if uh, democracy and human rights means uh, also minority as well and what i didn't like was it's it's all, all about my, my majority majority doesn't like and we don't want to see this and you know that's a little bit scary because uh, what does that mean well we also have minorities and they also have the rights and if they want to speak up it's the right right yeah. And exactly this point, like they receive these clashes between two different perspectives. And it seems that there is no bridge in between those perspectives. But however, uh, the intellectual researchers who, uh, for example, Koch 2012 and 2014, problematize the way human rights are implemented in non-Western context. And it says, he says that the dominant practice of human rights education promoted by UN narrows the potential understanding of human rights and diminishes the human rights education potential of social change. And instead reinforcing the status quo, the narrow understanding uh, and at the same time, dominant discourse of human rights education accepts the knowledge, which is institutional, experts, technical, while disregarding the cultural and community knowledge. And the third conceptualization of human rights discourse takes the standpoint in which this focus is on the individual interpretation of human rights within this particular context. And in order to support this transformative nature of human rights education, the critical and interpretative approach is key in the process of conceptualization of human rights, according to the uh, authors who are stated in the slide. So I'm not going to repeat their names, but according to these authors, uh, they, they all conceptualize the human rights uh, from the critical perspective and saying that neither cultural, it's like a third way uh, and it's a, it's a middle ground while saying that, uh, I'm going to repeat myself now, that universality of human rights is important, uh, but also the conceptualization in the context is crucial in order to understand this uh, human rights, which is universal in the nature. Um, yeah. And from, from here, I will, um, I will move on to, uh, and, uh, to elaborate more on the critical perspective, which the third conceptualization of human rights education, uh, critical hermeneutical pedagogical approach. This is an approach that I use to analyze uh, the models uh, of teachers education models and critical cosmopolitanism approach. I will present it, but I have um, not used it in my research. I presented uh, today for the I prepared it for this presentation uh, sm a small summary of this approach because I thought it was important as we talk about the citizenship uh, teachers and citizenship education as it's our focus in this week and, and today uh, all right uh, so I will start um, talking about the critical hermeneutical approach uh, which which is a big uh, topic, but I will rather take the um, small um, narrow focus on it, uh, which is the uh, hermeneutics as a methodology to understand the social subject by interpreting its historical and cultural cultural context. Um, the education about the human rights focused on the knowledge production about the rights while employing the Western conceptualization of human rights. An alternative is the education for realization of human rights and their equivalence, which stresses of using the cultural knowledge. It says by uh, Al Darovish, 2013. And in response to this problem of linear implementation of human rights and the process of pedagogical approach to better conceptualize uh, the human rights education, it requires um, experiential mean, meaning. So what does the experiential mean, meaning means? <laughs> In other words, it's like the crucial to acknowledge the necessity of human rights conceptualization in connection with a moral system from where the meaning of human rights uh, derives. Uh, this approach promotes a dialogical um, equality of the various traditions in terms of the human rights um, education. Um, Al Davarish, 2013, explains the hermeneutics as a methodology to understand the social subjects by interpreting its historical and cultural context. The interpretation is center point of hermeneutical approach, and it includes distance from individual traditions, knowledge and experience, 
uh, but distancing does not aim to disconnect the individuals from her own context, but rather it's enabling factor which uh, in which one can critically question his or her position concerning the knowledge in one's own uh, in, in the tradition, in other traditions. The critical hermeneutical viewpoint doesn't declare the absolute truth of human rights, which is different from the universal uh, universality of, hum of human rights, the, the first approach. And instead, it's, the importance is given to understanding uh, from perspective of a, of a hermeneutics to reach, um, reach individual understanding of the subject and critical understanding of the subject. So to go back to our example that uh, that Nino brought it in uh, in the in Zoom today, that if those who are coming from one cultural perspective are in the classroom asked how do they understand the human rights, uh, or how do, do they understand um, freedom of expression, and they motivate they motivate and they internalize these human rights in their daily practices, they might understand that they're not, not necessarily against it. So you understand, like, do, do, you, do you follow what I'm trying to explain? This is like theory and it's little, uh, it took me a whole semester to understand this concept. So I have to fit it in the one presentation. If you have a question, please do ask, and I will try my best to answer that. Um, anyways, um, and it gives the tools uh, as a pedagogic uh, for the teachers to conceptualize and contextualize uh, these universal concepts, which at, from one side might seem like something Western, something uh, something universal, something that is not uh, connected to our culture, but it's like for, for this critical hermeneutical perspective, when individuals are put in the place to understand their own ways of interpreting uh, the practices, one might according to the resources that I've just presented, according to them, uh, one might realize how close they can be uh, with, um, with the values, uh, with their own values and with the values of the human rights. Uh, yeah, so it's based on the interpretation and experiential meaning of the uh, principles. And the second um, approach, which is a critical cosmopolitanism approach, is um, focused on, uh, Natalie, second slide, please. <laughs> uh, it aims to give an account of social and political reality that seeks to identify trans uh, transformational possibilities within this uh, present, um, is the present, yeah, like, Within, within the present. And its main principles of it's like dialectical process, negotiation between different narratives, rational approach to learning and historical understanding and unique life narratives. So what the, uh, I quote here, uh, Adami 2014, and she explains and she suggests that human rights education needs to move away from preoccupation with bridging the gap between universal notions of human rights, subject and actual locality and focus on how human rights can be articulated in uh, learning through lived experience and narratives of learners. And human rights learning can be regarded as a cosmopolitan space where the universal meets the particular notions of human rights. So she doesn't deny to uh, not to use uh, the human rights uh, articles, but instead it says that keeping the UDH -er open for interpretation, reading international documents and conventions of human rights into the cultural narratives and contra contrasting different cultural narratives in relation to dominant master narratives of human rights. Therefore, the Adami suggests that human rights learning should be approached as a dialectical process of negotiation between conflicting and sometimes antagonistic cultural narratives. So what Nino said uh, before that she gives the space for uh, students to dialogue, that's what critical, uh, uh, critical cosmopolitan perspective promotes. Dialogue, personal narratives, uh, understanding the in history in which the human rights was created. Um, and it's focused on people's lived experience uh, and the people can be a teacher and can be uh, can be student. 
Um, all right. Any questions to uh, in regards to this uh, theoretical parts, or should I move on to actual study? <laughs> No questions? All right. So I will move on to um, the study and the method I've used um, in discourse analysis included the content analysis uh, of two, uh, three texts in total. So one text uh, was uh, UDCHR, uh, not UDCHR, uh, EDCHRE, the charter itself. And uh, I uh, used um, models two modules to look at from the program of teachers education. Um, in the human rights education, uh, human rights education in EDCHR, Charter emphasize uh, three following notions. Uh, I will not elaborate here what does the EDCHR -E, uh, Charter um, is about. I think that's uh, quite, um, yeah, uh, we're familiar with that. Uh, so, but uh, the three components that I've um, selected, not selected or, or identified in the definition of, of human rights and human rights edu uh, and education for democratic citizenship was awareness raising about human rights, empowering citizens, and protection of human rights and education for democratic citizenship. And according to these notions that I have identified, I looked, um, I analyzed uh, the models and I see whether it's, there's a differences and similarities and how does uh, the intersection between these two documents, um, yeah, what are the inter, inter, if there's a similarities and differences. So I analyzed uh, one model, which calls human rights education in citizenship uh, uh, teachers model, democratic citizenship in, in practice is the name of the models. It repeats the notions of EDC, HR Charter, and I have concluded that there is no contextual understanding of the notions uh, studied. The main literature is based uh, and issued by the international or regional organizations, and the students, uh, who in this case are the prospective teachers, they have no uh, chance to look at the peer-reviewed articles, which are included um, in the obligatory literature, are not included in the obligatory literature. And human rights, the word human rights, are not included in the syllabus. So what I did when I looked at the syllabus, so I looked at the aim, I looked at the uh, expected outcomes, a list of literature, um, and I also opened the list of literature and looked at the uh, content of the literature, not all the content, but the, uh, the co table of content to say, to understand what are the topics are covered. And in this first syllabus that I analyzed, um, democratic citizenship in practice, human rights are not mentioned at all. And neither expected outcomes uh, are state, state that students, in this case, prospective teachers, are um, required to critically examine the uh, principles or contents studied in the course. And the second model that I have looked at was um, human uh, was inter intercultural education pedagogical approach. And in this approach, the picture was different. Um, in the aims uh, and objectives of the of the syllabus, there was uh, the focus was on deliberative teaching and learning. Uh, even though it repeated the notions of EDCHRE, so like which was the th three notions: awareness raising, um, protection of uh, uh, protection of human rights and uh, education for democratic citizenship, and empowering citizens. That was repeated. Uh, however, uh, the prospective teachers were asked to have their own diaries and um, reflect on. Uh, reflect on their own ways, how do they see and understand based on their uh, based on their reflections and based on their lived experience. In here, we could see these elements of uh, interpretations and understanding, which is like critical hermeneutical uh, approach of understanding human, human rights education. Mm. Yeah, uh, so and yeah, okay, I will jump on to the results interpretation. So the two models that I have analyzed, uh, one that I could find more critical understanding and interpretations, which was presented in the concepts, 
Um, and the other one was a singular conceptualization of human rights as an universal meaning of human rights education. Uh, if you remember the slides that I was uh, was written, the three or four different um, understand or three different understanding of human rights discourse, which was like universal, cultural, relativist, and uh, yes, here, thank you. Um, so in the first model, we see universality of human rights without uh, any critical perspective or reflection on it. Culture relativist approach was not found anywhere. Um, however, in the second module that I've analyzed, critical perspective uh, from, and specifically uh, from the lenses of a critical hermeneutical perspective was prevalent because uh, there's a small difference because students, prospective teachers were asked to interpret their own way, uh, the concepts they were studying it. So in the center of learning, it was not concepts uh, presented as a universal truth or ultimate truth, but rather truth was coming from in combination of individual experience and, and these concepts studied uh, with the help of the literature. So there's like a difference between these two models. And these two models are part of one program. But I was quite surprised uh, to see these two different approaches. Um, the similarities between these two models are that they both include uh, the notions of EDC, HRE principles, but human rights is not mentioned in the syllabus. So human rights itself is not in the center of the program. And it's quite, um, and then, then I ask the question, so which place, where do the citizenship education teachers actually learning how to teach human rights? So where do they practice human rights education? If not in the preparation, you might have an answer for that. I couldn't find Intuitively, that. Intuitively, Guna. Intuitively, it's a good yeah. answer. Yeah. Um, all right, if we could move on to the second slide. So reflection to this that I want to, I, I think we still have like a few more minutes for the discussion that I will um, quickly finish with this discussion. Um, so like I've concluded um, uh, this small, very small scale research paper by saying that education for democratic citizenship um, it promotes active citizenship and political participation. Uh, however, it's not necessarily include the, the human rights education, even though they might be interrelated the concepts, the spectrum um, is different. It's because uh, that uh, human rights are for everybody and not everybody is a citizen. So we have in the country who are not citizens. So when we teach the human rights inside the citizenship subject, so we're limiting, making it um, exclusive for those who does not have a citizenship uh, status. Mm, yeah, but human rights are for rights for the everybody, not only for the citizens. So I repeat myself. And this is the last note uh, I wanted to uh, finish this presentation but not finish uh, the discussion. And I really uh, will be really glad if you have reactions or comments or, or remarks uh, of what I have founded in this very, very small research paper. Or if you have a critics about it. I think we can stop sharing. And uh, so I can see in the gallery view. Well, thank you for sharing. I'm a bit um, co not confused, but puzzled because like, we really do things intuitively and um, you put so much theoretical background on it. Now I need to go back to my actions and understand why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. Any reaction? Thank you, Nato. Oh, Nino, we don't, we can't hear you. Mm. 
Nariné wanted to go. You had a. Yeah. Uh, I can try uh, while Nino is fixing the technical stuff. Uh, today I have, I was the only representative from Armenia but from non-formal sector, but I want to thank uh, you, Aguna, for uh, the interesting and productive um, study that you have done and shared, uh, although it was uh, specifically about Georgian case and Georgian environment, but it was interesting to observe uh, how the situation is going uh, in Georgia, what recent changes you have. Uh, and to uh, compare it with Armenian reality as well. Uh, besides, I present also uh, Eastern European Network for Citizenship Education, ENC. I'm one of the members of the Coordination Council. On behalf of the Coordination Council, I want to thank you for your time, for your contribution, for sharing the expertise that you have in uh, Georgia, because sharing is caring. Thanks a lot and a big thanks to the country coordinator NATO for her endless support, uh, for her kind support, time and full expertise that uh, she put in the realization of uh, Citizenship Education Week in Georgia. Unfortunately, next event will be in Georgian. Uh, there is no sense for me to participate. I wish I knew Georgian and I could <laughs> be there. But uh, anyway, I wish best of luck. I know that this one will be the last in Georgian day. I wish the best uh, for this last activity as well. Thank you, Natojan. There is three other activities. so. Like one after the next one will be in English and it will be informal about like peace uh, um, education in practice. <laughs> Great, I will try on a way from office to home, I will try to join because peace uh, is something that we really, really exactly. miss in our region. So I will try to be there. Thank you for information. I hope that now I can, I can, you can hear me <laughs> or. Yes, now we can. Yeah, okay, okay, thank you. Uh, well, thank you for a very interesting presentation. That was really, you know, you gave us, you know, food for thought. So that's very good. And um, I would like to read your research. The presentation is good, like, but just you can't go into every detail. So I would love to read your research. That will be my, you know, little request to read your research. Thank you. Sometimes those oh, Thank you, dear Ekaterin. Now we need time because uh, I teach uh, citizenship, uh, I teach history also, and we citizenship, uh, teachers uh, need your support because it's not easy. It's not easy be active citizens and then teach this generation uh, right way, teach right way, how to be active citizens. That's why thank you all of you because uh, because we need you and we need time to understand what you have. Uh, all right, okay, thank you for today. Mm, well, I hope. Um... Anyone? Um, oh. I guess a lot of questions will be arise when we. Um, think and reflect on what we hear right now. So I guess Aguna will be reachable to answer your questions or we will all together try to answer questions. The one note they wanna make, I'm no expert in this course that I, I learn and I study and I really try to understand these concepts. Um, and uh, the one way of doing that uh, that I have practiced is um, reflecting on my previous experience because before becoming part of this academic um, 
program that I'm taking now, I uh, had like, a, a, let's say long, it was more like six or seven years experience working in the field of education and mostly non-formal sector, but last few years before, uh, before uh, coming to Stockholm, I worked with the schools and the teachers and that we also had like common project with uh, Civic Forum, or oh, we still have that. Um, so I, what I do it like when I try to learn the theories, I um, connect it with my previous experience. Uh, and as I was started presenting this presentation by personal interest, so I also go even back and beyond of my uh, work experience and try to imagine things from the perspective of a high school student that I was and when I was in part of the education. So it helps me connect different theories and helps me make the theories kind of um, familiar or get familiar with the, with the theories. Because sometimes it's good, uh, it uh, f feels abstract until you um, familiarize them to motion out it. All right. Um, any more comments? Any more questions? It's a, it's a great pleasure. I don't know. I was felt so honored to be able to talk uh, about about it uh, and also a little bit um, a little responsibility because. I don't know. I have, as I said before, I have this theoretical perspective, but I, well, I had never been a teacher as such. Uh, I've volunteered and I worked with the teachers. I worked in the school, but not. It's never been part of my routine. So I think your perspectives are, are informing uh, my understanding as well, and it's great. So we managed to have our seminar lecture in one hour time, that was our limit. And thank you, Egona, for everything, for your contribution to this day. And especially it is very important that we need to remember that there is always like some frames we need to like uh, go back and um, check if some things we are doing is like, you, you gave a lot uh, for thought as Nina already mentioned. So thank you for that. Temo says thank you in the chat. Mm, thank you, oh, Temo. He, he and Tamara were on the way and they couldn't participate fully, but they were listening and following. It's a pleasure to see you and everyone. Um, 